Cause all I seem to do is hurt me 
it is so. Amen. Now, when, when we pray, pray we want to end, end that with a declaration, a decree. decree. So, so I'm speaking for all of you listening, starting, starting here, here, starting now. The things, things that hurt you in the past won't control, control your future. future. Starting now, this, this is a new day. day. This, this is your exodus. You, you are officially really. Now, now sing it for the end. end.
what you owe him. Give him what you owe him. Give him what you owe him, church.
stand for I am the resurrection and the life says the Lord he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believeth thou this for I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day and though worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we will carry nothing away. For the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
God be the glory. son this church to this family and friends we come today to celebrate to celebrate the life and legacy of this wonderful mother sister Gwendolyn L. Hall celebrate because it's celebration time Yes. For the Lord said in his word, Blessed are they that die in the Lord, even so say the Spirit, for they rest from their labor. So we celebrate. Yes. We are not at a funeral, we are at yes. home going. Yes. Hallelujah. You, for the Apostle Paul said this, for we know that when this earthly tabernacle of this house is devolved, we have a house of God, not made by hands, but eternal into heaven. So to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. So give God some good praise. To him yes. be the glory. Hallelujah. Him be the glory. Thank you. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Now the family has prepared the program and we will follow it as print, printed. After the selection from the music ministry, we have the reading of the scriptures. Old Testament Minister Roger Herring, New Testament Minister Linda Scott, Invocation, Reverend James Sumter, then another selection from the Ministry of Music in that order. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Old Testament scripture. We'll be taken from the 91st Psalms, eight verses of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, I was once Sunday school teacher. She was always a delight to have in the class. Ah. Eight verses. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow yes. of the Almighty. Yes. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge yes. and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely, He will save you from the foulest snare All right. and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe your eye, with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Eight verses of the 91st division of the Psalms. May, the, may God add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his said word. Amen. Good morning, all you beloved children of God. Our New Testament scripture reading this morning is coming from Romans chapter 8, and I will begin reading at verse 35 and following verses. And it reads as follows. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or prosecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor anything present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. And the church said, Amen. Let us pray. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. So Father, we come this morning, we start by saying thank you. For in the midst of tears and in the midst of sorrow, you are still worthy yes, to be praised. You are still God, 
You're still king of kings. You're still Lord of lords. Well. So God, we say thank you. That you are the resurrection and the life. And he that died in you, though they be dead, yet shall they live again. So God, we say thank you. And now God, we lift up this family to you, God. In the name of Jesus. And God, we cast them upon you. For you said, cast all our cares upon you. So now, God, we put them in your hand. And God, we know that while they're in your hand, no man can pluck them out of your hand. Now, God, we pray that you will comfort them as only you can do. Give them a peace, God, that surpasses all understanding. Let them, God, draw strength from knowing, God, that you love them. You will never leave them nor yes. forsake them. For you promise to be with them always, even until the end of the world. For David said, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Take them now, God. Strengthen now, God. Keep as the apple of your eye and give them your peace. In Jesus' name, amen.
I'm going up beyond to be in my Lord. Don't you worry, cause I'm going up beyond. I'm going up yonder. Yes, I am. I'm going up beyond. I'm going to see Jesus face to face. It's going to be amen. Hey, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. No more pain and agony. Yes, I'm going to see Jesus. Hey, face to face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. Going up yonder to be with my Lord. Every day will be Sunday. I'll just be with my Lord. You don't have to worry about me. I'm going to be with Jesus. I'm going to see him as he is and see him face to face. Hey, 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 I'm going to be with my that we are here today sad because Mama Quinn is not present physically with us anymore sad because we're going to miss that smile and all that hair But we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So on the other end, we are glad to know where she is. Yeah. And, and we are glad to know that her and grandma, daughter, and granddaughter are all together. And, and so we we celebrate, we celebrate, we celebrate because she's got victory. What can I say about Sister Hall? Um, she was so many things around here to young folk, uh, not to mention she was the youth directress for I don't know how many years. It, Seemed like a long time. She was just working in youth ministry first with the parents and uh, then with the youth ministers and then as youth directors. Um, she went everywhere uh, and, and we had her support. Uh, the kids loved her because she wasn't, she, she demanded respect but she wasn't strict. Uh, and so you could let your hair down with Sister Hall. Um, so many places, so many conventions and congresses and all of that. Just going to miss Gwen. Definitely a part of the fabric of Abyssinia. If not for Gwen, we wouldn't have David, who Bishop affectionately named long, 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 long time ago when he was just a little boy, Huggy. And so if you hear me say Huggy, 
and you don't know who I'm talking about. All the staff and members know who Huggy is. Huggy is David. He's he's a son of the house. Um, and now he's always been in the media ministry in one form or another, and now he is the director of our media ministry. My heart's been hurting since I got the call the other Sunday. And I can be honest and say that all of Abyssinia was shaken to discover not only the passing of Sister Hall's mother, but then herself, just a few hours apart. in there and show some, some sort of control, but to be honest, Huggy, we hurt when you hurt. And I feel you. And I can say this, that though your immediate family has gone home before you, the blessing of being an Abyssinian is that you've got such a big family here. And so, do know we're going to love on you, we're going to check on you, Make sure you're eating right and, and that everything's fine. So I debated on what to say. <sighs> and what's strange is when, when staff is on the front row, um, there's so many different sermons I've preached, and quite a few they've already heard and might know by heart. And so I wanted to look at this one text in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, and I'm reading it from the New King James Version where the Lord says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. For a few moments, I just want to look at that verse. I want to talk to you from this thought, a climactic charge for the believers, a climactic charge for the believers. My brothers and sisters, as many of you know me, you know that I am an avid movie watcher and I am a fan of quite a few movies. I know that in movies, y'all, there are some key elements that exist in almost every storyline such elements as conflict, climax, resolution, and closure all make up the standard movie flow. However, y'all, there are some movies that abruptly end at the peak of the climax without any resolve or a proper closing. 
These movies, y'all, that end like this are known as cliffhangers, leaving the audience wondering how the conflict will be resolved and what the ending would look like. As a matter of fact, two of the greatest cliffhangers ever made uh, was one with the series uh, Dallas, and I'm aging myself, uh, that TV series um, that was entitled, that particular episode, Who Shot J.R.? With J.R. Ewing being on the floor outside of his office bleeding from two gunshot wounds, the series came to a close. The next is one of my favorite movies from my favorite strand of movies, Star Wars. And in that series, in the third episode, what was the third then, or the second then, and now the fifth, uh, Empire Strike Back, with Luke Skywalker stunned y'all from the news of Darth Vader being his father. Both of these cliffhangers were resolved in the next year when their storylines were picked up with the new season and the next movie. However, I believe that the all-time worst cliffhanger was the third movie of The Matrix. After building up the ultimate battle between mankind and machines, the third and what we thought was the final movie ends with the cliffhanger leaving the viewers wondering who won and what happened to Neil, the hero, and how did this doggone thing really end? It's with this thought of the eschaton, which is the end of time, that the Apostle Paul makes clear to every believer and even non-believer that the story of mankind, catch this, will not end with the cliffhanger. Paul makes it crystal clear, y'all, that when the end time comes, Christ Jesus and those who put their faith in him will be victorious. Paul alludes to this victory when he opens verse 58 with the connecting conjunction, therefore. Look at it. In verse 58, when Paul opens with therefore, my beloved brothers, he is instructing every one of his fellow believers to be completely committed uh, to Christ because we have victory over death through our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul is saying to the believers that because there will be the return of Christ, the resurrection of the dead, and the rapture of the living, be steadfast in doing the Lord's work, knowing that he will reward you in the end. After such a climactic conclusion in verses 54 and 55 where Paul declares death has been swallowed up in victory and he asks the question, oh death, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? Paul now, y'all, closes with a charge to the Christians. First, he charges us to be stable in our feelings. In verse 58a, Paul says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Here, Paul states that every Christian should be stable first, here it is, in what we believe. The word steadfast in the Greek is hedros and means to be seated, settled, or firmly situated. Paul understood, y'all, that the devil is always trying to confuse the believers. So he's writing chapter 15 because some of the Corinthians believers have allowed someone to confuse them into believing that there is no resurrection of the dead. However, after proving to them that there is a resurrection from the dead because Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, Paul now commands the believers to be settled and be firm and situated in what we believe. 
Look at it. Uh, uh, when I, I was I was getting a haircut many many years ago in, in, in a different barber shop, and it, there were Muslims there because one of the barbers was a Muslim, and and um, there's always the brothers hanging around, and I'm sitting there getting a haircut, and I'm listening uh, to the Muslims talk, and they're talking, and and there's a deacon from another church there, and they they're saying, yeah, that that, that you know they they done been bamboozled into believing uh, that that they. There's, there's a heaven and there's an afterlife, but there ain't no left afterlife. And the deacon chimed in with the Muslims and said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, y'all right. I, 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 uh, uh, I got a son. That's that's that that's 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 my that's my afterlife. It's my son. That, and, and 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 that's what God meant when He was talking about uh, you'll live forever. That that's through your children. I wanted to say, well, deacon, what about those that don't have any children? And that makes God a liar, deacon. Really you ought to read more in Sunday school and talk less. Listen, because Paul says for us to understand that, listen, there has been a resurrection from the dead and that if you believe, watch this, that Christ has been raised from the dead, then he is the fruit, first fruit from the graveyard. And here's why we're excited because, because he has been raised. We know that those who die in him will also be raised. Ah, so you need to know what you know and not let anybody shake your faith. Ah, Paul says now that you know the truth be steadfast in what you believe. As a result of what we believe every Christian should be settled in how we behave. Let me come and get you. When it comes to dealing with death especially the death of the loved one or even dealing with your own mortality, we must be stable in our feelings. Alan Carr stated that what we believe will always be determined uh, and determine rather how we behave. In, in addressing the overwhelming grief of those in the church at Thessalonica after the death of the church mother, Paul says, brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who have fallen asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Paul says, listen here, y'all y'all, hold on. I understand it's a sad occasion. I understand that the church has lost its church mother. I understand that everybody's heart is hurt. He says, but check your behavior because watch this. We know that we ought to respond different than how the world responds because the world responds when someone dies and they don't believe in Christ. Oh, well, you can fall out, you can scream, and you can shout. But what we know is different from them. We know that the dead in Christ shall be the first to rise. We, we know that those who were living and believed in Christ, though they were dead, yet shall they live again you got to know what you know and let what you know govern how you behave as believers y'all we don't fall out and cut the fool over our loved ones who have died in the Lord because we celebrate their life we celebrate their legacy but most of all we come to celebrate their victory over death and the grave so as sad as my heart is that Mother Gwen has passed on to the other side I, I've got this constant reminder in the back of my mind that this ain't it this ain't goodbye it's just see you later it's sad as I'm feeling, I, I am reminded that though she's been evicted out of this body, ah, she ain't homeless because the Bible declares that when these earthly tabernacles of ours have finally dissolved, we've got a better building not made by hand, eternal in the heaven. And so I shout because I know though she is absent from the body, she is present with the law. That's why Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 5, 16 through 18 that the believers should rejoice always, pray without ceasing, hand in everything, 
give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I know that seems hard. He says in everything give thanks. And I know Dave you might be wrestling with what can I thank God for but I come to remind you ah you got some years you owe him thanks that he gave you a wonderful mother. You've got years that you owe him thanks for how he allowed time to be shared but most of all you owe him thanks because he's taken care of her afterlife ah though she has passed from this side ah no longer worried about her hurting leg no more worried about her failing health ah no longer worried about the cares of this world God has upgraded her ah to a body that will never dissolve ah to a place where there is no more pain there is no more crying there is no more dying and so while I'm thinking about what I lost I have to think about what she gained when she closed her eyes she opened them on the other side and she gained peace everlasting and she gained eternal but that ain't it after a while I'll see her again so when folk won't to know how you can shout in the midst of your sorrow. You tell them the reason you can shout is because of what you know. You know that death is just a transition to eternity. You know that to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. You know that when this earthly tabernacle is dissolved, God's got a better building, not made by hand. <laughs> ah, that's it, that's it. You can shout because of what you know. Not, not only does Paul charge the believer to be stable in our feelings, but then to also be stubborn in our faith. Verse 58b, Paul says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and immovable after charging the believer to be steadfast in their feelings Paul now tells them to be immovable in their faith this is seen first with our worship the word immovable in the Greek is amatikos and it means not movable you say well that sounded simple please, please don't miss this this is a saying that is said when something cannot be moved or changed in our vernacular we say that it is set in stone here Paul is emphatic that the believers two tenets of faith worship and work be set in stone and be not movable by outside interests obligations or events uh, there should be nothing and no one that can move worship off of our schedule that, that even at death we come in worshiping God that, that even when life seems to have rolled us a gutter ball, when life seems to have thrown us a curveball too fast for us to handle, we still come in giving God thanks. And when somebody asks, how can you worship God and how can you give him thanks at a time like this, you, you ought to tell him the reason I can worship and the reason I can give him thanks is because because this didn't catch him by surprise. Uh, no, no, God, God knew she was coming. Matter of fact, came and picked her up himself. And because he had already prepared, he already had a place in store for her. Jesus says over in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you he said I go to prepare a place for you and when it's ready and you're ready for it I'll come and receive you for myself ah oh, that where I am there ye can be also oh, he, he came on schedule it, there's nothing that surprised him and because he was finished with her preparation we can come in now yeah with sad hearts but still lifted hands I 
We can come in now, yeah, with tears rolling, but still with voices lifted up telling him thank you. Why? Because we serve an awesome God. Let push cut, cut, cut cross field. Not only is it seen in our worship, but it's also seen y'all in our work. In verse 58b, Paul commands the believer to always be abounding in the work of the Lord. The word abounding in the Greek is perusio, which means overflowing and exceeding in measure. Here, the apostle Paul states that it's the, it's the imperative, it's imperative that the believer's life is marked by exceeding measure of work done for the Lord. In, in, in other words, Paul is saying um, that, watch this, we, we don't work to get saved, but we work because we are saved. <laughs> Okay, you missed it. But Paul says that, that, that the sign of whether or not you belong to Christ is going to be seen not by what you say, but by the work you do. Uh, okay, okay, let me, let me come get you. Uh, but behavior causes labels. For a person who drinks a lot, we call them an alcoholic. For, for, for a person who lies a lot, we call them a liar. Uh, behavior causes labels. And if you are a Christian, you, you ought to be known by your labor that your work should give you away. Uh, uh, that, 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 that watch this you, you ought to be fruitful in other words if you're saved uh, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7 you will know them by their fruits are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles in the same way every good tree bears good fruit but the bad trees bear bad fruit a good tree cannot bear bad fruit nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will be known, uh, you will know them by their fruit. Uh, li listen, I, 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 I was in a class at the National and um, it was pastor's only class and uh, we, we were sitting in class and um, Dr. Aaron Chapman asked uh, a question that has sort of stuck with me ever since. He said, how many of you in here uh, pastors play golf? And, and, and uh, over two thirds of the room raised their hand. And, and, and then he says, okay, I see, I see. Got quite a bit of golfers in here. He says, now how many of you in here play golf every day? And nobody hand went up. And he said, the reason why all of you who play golf um, didn't raise your hand because you don't play golf every day is because you are not a professional golfer. He said, stay with me. He said, um, how many of you in here are professional pastors? Everybody look around. He says, here it is. Uh, how many of you in here are studying God's word every day? And, and, and always preparing and always making notes. And, and he said, yeah, the room. He said, you, you see where I'm going? I said, yeah, I see, I see where you're going. He, he, he says, what you do mostly will show who you are. And, and, and so... For the common believer, you can't live like hell Monday through Saturday and then huck a buck up in here on Sunday morning because that's not really who you are. And if you are going to be known by your fruit, then you got to be guilty, there it is, of producing the fruit that God has assigned you to produce. 
Let me push on. Not only does Paul charge the believer to be stable in our feelings and stubborn in our faith, but finally the believers are charged to be sure in our future. Here it is, Huggy, and I'm out of here. Verse 58, the text says, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. As believers, the Apostle Paul states that we should have a high level of surety about our future. Uh, this surety is a result in what we know. First, about the Lord's return, and then about our reward. First, his return. Paul states as believers, our labor is not in vain because of what we know. The word he uses for know in the Greek is not the commonly used word genoskis, but he uses the Greek word edu, and that's significant because genosis means a progressive knowledge that which is being learned. But edu means a fulfilled knowledge, uh, that which is complete and perfect. This means that the exceeding amount of work done for the Lord is done not out of what the worker believes, but rather of what we know. In other words, I, I'm not working because I hope that Christ is coming back or because I believe that Christ is coming back. But the reason why I'm working, uh, especially this hard, is because I know that Christ is coming back. Uh, that's the reason Paul states in this verse off with the word, starts this verse off with the word, uh, therefore, because in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, he says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God uh, and the dead in Christ shall rise first uh, I, I, and I ain't questioning if he's coming uh, I, I know he's coming matter of fact I know he's soon to return uh, and because I know he's soon to be to return uh, and then I'm committed uh, watch this to not let him catch me with my work undone uh, well when I was a kid with my brother Rod my mama would tell us uh, Ah, uh, listen here, I'm going to work uh, during the summer. She said, I'm going to work. Y'all job today is clean my house and, and clean. I ain't talking about your clean. I'm talking about my clean. And she said, you got to clean the house before I get back. Well, of course, she left at 7. And at 7, we got back in the bed because uh, it was, it was, it was the summer. Uh, and then somewhere we got up, had breakfast, didn't wash one dish, uh, put them in the sink. Uh, then we went and watched a little TV because it was the, the summer. Uh, and then friends called and came over. We went outside and we played with friends. Uh, we kept looking at the clock somewhere around one two o'clock we started looking at each other knowing uh, that it wasn't if mama was coming back. And we were certain she was coming back and, and not only were we certain she was coming back we were certain that if she came home and caught us with that house being dirty our work not being done that she had a reward for us that, that could be ongoing and, and I'm from the old school when mama whoop you and then dad get home later and she tell dad he he, and he wants some of that. He's strapped up too. And, and, and so you could get two whippings for one thing. Listen, and, and so we would stop what we were doing and get in the house and, and, and listen. My brother and I argued all the time, but when, when it's crunch time, we collaborated. We worked perfect. We, we were in harmony. Yes, I, I'll wash you dry and then I'll put away. I'll sweep you mop. And yeah, yeah. I, and we could get the house clean before she got there. Well, I just want to tell you uh, that over 2,000 years, Years ago, Jesus was seen departing in a cloud. He was ascending back home. Ah, 
but he left his promise uh, that I will be back. And sooner or later, you need to start turning your mind towards the fact uh, that he's closer to come now than he was when I was younger. And so now I got to be more about my father's business. I dare you to tell your neighbor, I know that he's coming back. I know he's on the way. But not only are we working because we're sure and certain of his return. Ah, but here it is, Huggy. We're working because we are certain and sure of our reward. Paul basically says here in the last verse of chapter 15, now my brothers and sisters, in light of these sublime truths, the resurrection, salvation, the parousia, and the rapture, be steadfast in doing the Lord's work, perfectly knowing that he will reward you at his second coming. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul talks about our reward. In verse 1, he says, for we know that when this earthly tabernacle of ours is dissolved we've got a better building not made by hand. Well I've seen the reward. John writes about it from the Isle of Patmos in his revelation. John says the best way I can describe the reward David is to tell you about the land God has in store for you. John said the best way I can entitle where we're going is to the land of no more. He says because over there there is no more dying. Over there there is no more sickness. Over there there is no more crying. And here's the part I shout about Nancy because he says over there there is no more goodbyes. He said there's only howdy howdies. He said every day will be like Sunday and the Sabbath will have no end. That's all I got. But one of these mornings, ah, it might not be very long. You gonna look for me. Don't worry if you don't see me down here. Just know that I've gone home. Why? Because I've got a reward with my name on it. And so one of these days I'm gonna see my loved ones again. One of these days, I'm going to hug my father again. One of these days, you going to see your mama. You going to see your sister. You going to see your grandmama. Ah, but as good as that is, I still got one greater. Because one of these days, I'm going to see the Lord for myself. I'm going to sit there and look at him. Some folk got a lot of what they going to do but I'm just going to look at him and the first thing I want to tell him is thank you thank you for how you kept me thank you for how you saved me thank you for how you took care of me and thank you for coming and getting me is there anybody here that's confident that my reward is on the way that's all I got. Listen, be steadfast, Un, unmovable, David. Oh, we take a beating, but we keep on, we keep on ticking. Keep on working because God sees your fruit and God's got your reward. Maybe someone's here. And the good news is, if you knew Gwen, then watch this. You knew that she knew the Lord Jesus. I didn't have to come here and preach Gwen's eulogy. She lived her eulogy. And ain't a person in here, if you knew Mama Gwen long enough, you knew that she had a personal relationship with the Lord. So don't you worry, don't you fret. She's in a way better place. Though her body evicted her. We can shout because she's been evicted, but she sure ain't homeless. 
She's been upgraded to a better place. But the question remains now, what about you? Here's the catch. Everybody got to know the Lord for their own selves. Mama may have and daddy may have. But watch this. Every child got to know him for yourself. If you want to see Jesus, if you want to see your loved ones again, then you got to know the Lord as your own personal Savior. The Bible declares that for God so loved you, that even when you were at your worst, he gave his very best. And that was his son Jesus, whose love for you was so great that he said, no man takes my life, but I lay it down. He says, I lay it down for my friends. And all you got to do is believe on him and you'll have everlasting life. Doors of the church are open to invitation to become a follower of Christ is extended unto you. What an awesome testimony for all of the children and young folk that Mama Gwen worked so hard to tell them about Jesus, to show them the love of Jesus. The lives touch we shall never know how many but I've just been looking at some of her fruits and I'm assured of her reward and if that's what you want you ought to make him Lord today all you got to do is come God bless you God keep you is our prayer Yeah. <laughs> 
in the Lord. Can I sing it one more time? Oh, though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still, that hope that lies within its reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shores, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. Ooh, oh, if, if the storms, if the storms don't cease, and just in case the wind they keep on blowing, blowing in my life, my Lord, for oh, my soul's been an anchor in, in the Lord. Oh, I realize that sometimes in this life we're going to be tossed. Anybody can testify by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, I, 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 I've got an anchor and it keeps me steadfast and unmovable despite the tide. Oh, oh, if, if the storms, if the storms don't cease, and just in case the wind will will winds, the wind will will winds, keep on blowing in my life. Well, my soul's been anchored, yeah. My soul's been anchored. 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 The pillars may roll. The breakers may dash, but I shall not sway because he holds me fast. So dark the days, clouds in the sky. I know it's all right, because Jesus is mine. I set my soul. Well, my soul, my soul, my soul. Press me down. Jesus picks me up. He's always by my side. When the going gets up, well, he'll rock you to sleep. Late at night, he'll step right in and make everything all right. I said he'll rock you to sleep. Late at night, he'll step right in and make everything all right. All right, I said he'll rock you. <laughs> I said he'll rock you. <laughs> In the midnight hour, he'll rock you. He will rock you. Well, he'll step right in. He'll step right in. He'll step right in and make everything all right. My soul has been Anchored in, 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 
in the Lord. If your soul's been anxious, give a hot praise.
those fruits that Pastor talked about. I was the assistant um, director when Sister Gwen was the youth director. But before then, I was one of her youth up under the leadership of Brother Mason. So we worked closely together many days, many years. Me and David and Desiree grew up in Abyssinia together. Um, Miss Gwen knew when we were having bad days. She knew when we were having good days. She was easy to talk to. And I just wanna say that I thank God for her leadership. And also, I just want to say thank you that even when she stopped being the youth director, she was always feeding the kids. She would come do arts and crafts with them. She would still do things with the youth. So David, we're here for you. We love you. On the behalf of the youth ministry and all of the staff here, we're praying for you. And you still got us and we got you. Amen. So when I was co-president with Tom and Simone with the youth ministry, and even as I went on to be an adult, she guided me as a mom, as new mom, as everything I, every milestone, she never missed it. Even when I strayed, like Miss Gwen was always there, and David was always like my big brother. And even as I became an adult and started my career, I was able to give back to her. I was had the pleasure of being her nurse. And she never stopped pouring into me every chance she got, especially that time we got to spend together. For those few months, I was with her, like helping her. And I, I was joke, told David, like, I always would make her my last patient on my med pass just because it would give me time to do whatever she needed me to do. Like, and sometimes I'd get in trouble. One day I went in there to fussed at my son on my phone in her room to hide. She's like, oh no, you're not gonna come in here and do that now. You can come in here and do a lot of things, but you're not gonna come in here and fuss at your baby. Like, and I'm just really grateful for everything that she left in me, and especially these last few months I got to spend with her, and I'm gonna miss her a lot. I'm gonna miss her comments on my Facebook posts when I post my kids, and I'm gonna miss just her pouring into me and just guiding me and Telling me when I'm wrong, telling me when I'm right, like I'm gonna really miss Miss Gwen and I'm just grateful for everything that she's been to me in my 30 years. And David, I'm here, you know I got you. I always have, so thank you. Can y'all hear me? Before she was a mother, she was my mother. She brought me up. Without her, I don't think she and my sister would be alive today. I'm always here for you, David. Remember that. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nicole. And David, you know you always been a big bro brother. 27 years. When y'all moved down here, we became family. Mama Gwen stepped into my life as my mother got sick and became my mother figure. Without her, I am not who I am today without her. And she embedded into me something that always stuck out to me. And even now with my son, she get on me about him because she, she just, that's, it is what it is. 
and I'm thankful to know you and Desiree and your whole family my whole life. And I love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, David. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, on behalf of the media ministry, little bruh, little bruh. You know, we had good times with mama and um, glad we got to celebrate her birthday. Y'all looking y'all programs, y'all see that picture of the diva. She was a diva but she was our diva. So, uh, pop right there, walking in. So, um, you know, we here for you. Media ministry here for you. Um, Popo, I got, we got you too. We got you. We got your music too, no matter what. We love you and uh, We love you, bruh. We love all of y'all. You know, I just want to say, David, I love you. And uh, Dwayne was a big part of this youth ministry. And I'm just going to wonder who's going to call me DJ Patty Pat from now on. I'm going to miss that every time she sees me. DJ Patty Pat. Y'all, somebody got to take that mantle. But we love you from the media ministry. I'm still a part. See, I'm still here, but I want to say we love you. Thank you, Pastor. And our entire church family for everything. You all have been in my life and my mom's life for all these years. And I really thank y'all for always keeping her in your prayers and loving her. And even when we tried to hide it, <laughs> y'all would know that she wasn't here and be like, well, where your mom? Well, tell her we pray for her and everything is gonna be all right. Um, I thank you all for loving her and loving me during this past year. It's been hard, but I'm thankful that we had, and I say we, because I've learned to share her with a lot of y'all. <laughs> we had a mother that believed and loved God. She taught us to love, trust, Stay faithful to his word, no matter what she was going through. She put a lot of our needs before her own. And I'm going to always, always cherish that. And so I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Good afternoon. My experience with Gwen Hall was different. Gwen and I had a relationship that most people won't understand. Let me give you an example. We will be in church, and she said, oh, you're going to walk past me? I should have tripped you with my cane. And my response was, go ahead and do it, and I'm going to twist that wig. Come on, we can go do this together. That's the kind of relationship that she and I had. Last year, or earlier this year, when uh, she was in hospital, with, and I didn't know what she was there for, I said, well, I'm going to come and visit you. Before I got there, I talked to David and said, well, I'm going to see your mom. He said, you can't go see her. She got COVID. I said, oh, she didn't tell me that. I said, she's trying to set me up. I don't want the cooties. No. So no, I will not see her. But I talked to her. We talked often. We made each other laugh by the time we got off the phone. Her birthday, she called me because I had not responded to the invite. And she said, you're going to be at my party. I said, you're not the boss of me. But I said, I'll be there. Then she texted me back later on and said, could I do temperature checks uh, uh, at the party? I said, well, how much does that pay? And she said, what do you want? I said, one million dollars. She knew I was laughing and playing with her. And I said, absolutely, I'll be there. I've been there through every transition that they've been through from Aiden to Desiree and now to her. And I just feel that when mama left, she said, mama's not going by herself. I'm going to be with my mama, my daughter, and my grandson. Thank you, sir, for loving her, for being there for her. She has raised two wonderful children who she was proud of, who she loved through whatever they went through. That's a true mother, and that is true love. Now, with that being said, and I, since I'm already up here, and probably the last one, I'm also doing reflections. So I don't have to move anywhere. So, Please continue to pray for us as we move forward through this process and during the sympathy of our time of loss. Thank you for your condolences, words of kindness towards us as it's the strength that we need to overcome this situation means so much to us. We appreciate you and thank you and to spend such valuable time pouring overwhelmingly love during this a uh, time of heartache to our family. Thank you. On behalf of Deacon Lonnie Johnson and District 22, we extend a heartfelt condolences and we mourn and we celebrate also with you. We also would like to let you know, David, though you may be lonely sometimes, you are not alone. Again, to this family and to our son, we love you all. To say that we love Gwen would be an understatement. Um, it's amazing when you think of all the things Gwen was involved with here at Abyssinia. I, I, I had forgotten until Minister Allen said it that Gwen used to come and feed the children. Most folk when 
they step down from a position or retire from their position at the church, sort of disappear, um, but not go in. Uh, but ever present. And she will definitely be missed on this side. As pastor, I have now eulogized grandbaby, daughter and Desiree, and now the mom, Gwen. In about a five year span, And none of these homegoings has been easy. When I got the call about the baby, my heart broke. And when we got here, fighting back all the tears, and my heart just ached for Desiree. And then unexpectedly, last year we were here. When David called me at four in the morning, it's like our world tilted. And Gwen hadn't even been told because she was in the hospital. <clears throat> I couldn't be more proud than to be the pastor of Mama Gwen and Desiree and the baby. There are parts of pastoring I tell people I absolutely hate because it hurts. But make no mistake, David was a pleasure to be your mom's pastor. Every pastor wants a great youth directress. Somebody watch this who's in it, not for the position, not simply because they child is a part of it, but because they love God's children. And for that, I thank God. At this time, if the attendants will come, we will do the committal here. Again, y'all, we are reminded that everyone born of a woman will die. For we cometh up like a flower and we're cut down like a shadow. We never continue in one state. 
truth of the matter, y'all, we live in the land of the dying. But Max, I got good news. For those of us who are like Mama Gwen and are in Christ Jesus, we're headed to the land of the living. For as much as it has pleased the Almighty God and His wise providence, call out of this world the soul of our deceased sister, we herefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust looking for the general resurrection to come in his second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world. The good news is, David, that the dead that sleep in him shall be raised. And these old feeble and corruptible bodies will be changed like unto his own glorious body we will be caught up together in the air. Doesn't matter when he returns. For those of us who are alive cannot prevent those who have died in him from being caught in the air and changed in the twinkling of an eye. And so we celebrate Gwen's life. But more than that, we celebrate her victory. Because now she has life evermore. The benediction. God, we thank you for all you have done. We thank you, Father God, that you provided such a great mother, not just to Huggy and Desiree, but to so many of us. We thank you that in her smile and in her care, we saw your love. We thank you for the countless lives that have been changed, for the steering back on course that has happened to so many from your daughter. And for that, God, we bless your name. God, I ask that you Hold David in your hand. Yes, God. Got some rough days ahead. But I thank you that it's not one day that's ahead of him that you won't be there with him. psalmist declared that when my father and mother have forsaken me then you Lord will take me up and so God we pray that you take him now and hold him in your care we thank you for your word that declares that weeping may endure for a night season but joy will come in the morning. So God, we pray that you hasten, hasten the morning. Keep this family in your care, give them traveling grace. Continue, Father God, to give them unlimited mercy. We'll continue to give you our praise. And now, the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may the love of our God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest and rule with each and every one of us, now, henceforth, and forevermore. 
Amen. 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 At this time, if we can have the flower attendants to come. Oh, <laughs> 